this is Gila. I came back last week from a two-week trip to the USA with my American husband to visit family there and celebrate Passover with them. It was really nice and we're very glad we went. We met a two and a half year old granddaughter who, thanks to COVID, we'd only seen on Skype so far. Travelling does seem to get harder the older you are and adjusting to several hours time differences isn't easy for anyone. By the time we got to the airport in Tel Aviv and I was struggling with my smartphone to get the barcodes we needed for our obligatory COVID tests and a drinks machine that I could no longer figure out how to buy a bottle of water from, it all got a bit too much to cope. We're still recovering and adjusting, but today I finally feel sufficiently okay to create a new video. America, by that I mean the USA, is certainly a land of plenty compared with Israel. Faced with rows of choices of many different brands for the same essential products in huge shops, cars with car seats that heat up if you want, and with different temperatures possible in different parts of the car, wonderful whipped cream cheese and butter, fresh duck available in supermarkets and much, much else besides, it was certainly really nice to experience all that. But there's no place like home. Here in Israel, we missed the usual Ramadan anti-Jewish violence and riots when our Israeli government stupidly, but sadly, predictably caved into the Islamic bullying, banning Jews and other non-Muslims, even from visiting what is in fact the very holiest Jewish site of all, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, even though it happened to be Passover. Absolutely ridiculous and totally outrageous. Imagine Muslims being banned from even visiting their own Kaaba in Mecca simply because non-Muslims violently objected. And you could still risk arrest simply from praying on the Temple Mount, which of course religious Jews need to do there. All peaceful worshippers, and of course that includes Muslims who generally respect the rights of others just as much as Jews, Christians or anyone else, should be able to pray on the Temple Mount 24-7 peacefully and openly. It's huge and there's plenty of room for all. But anyone who riots, docks weapons there, tries to foment violence against other worshippers, throws stones down on Jews praying at the Western Wall, or desecrates the holiest Jewish site of all, bought by King David 3,000 years ago for the Jewish people in perpetuity, should be thrown off. But not peaceful people simply needing to pray there. Turning back to America, of course, the latest in the whole catalogue of absurdities for the administration of the imposter, apart from his far too obvious deteriorating hold on reality, is the decision to create a new disinformation governance board in the form of the singing Nina Yankovic, whose qualifications appear to include claiming that the now publicly verified Hunter Biden laptop was a Trump campaign product, and who shudders to think about if free speech absolutists were taking over more platforms. Clearly deranged, as well as totally unconstitutional and a direct violation of the American First Amendment guaranteeing free speech. This is the now move to the far left Democrats answer to Elon Musk taking over Twitter. Parallels to the Ministry of Truth from George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984 are all too apposite. Obviously, there's much going on below the surface that most of us don't really know anything about, and many Americans are rightfully outraged at the clear assaults on their human rights, but nevertheless, I can't help wondering if perhaps all the enjoyable high standards of luxury and comfort in many American lives and enjoy them, good luck to you. But there's still more available in America than anywhere else. Maybe they might have detracted from a real ability to have the courage to stand up and fight for what really matters. Within the Constitution, of course. 
for American human rights and freedoms to be restored equally for all. The huge crimes committed in November 2020 and subsequently against free and fair representation could and perhaps should have been remedied well over a year ago now. And yet we're still waiting for enough courage from members of various state legislatures, including Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Arizona, actually to live up to their constitutional duty and decertify the results of what was clearly a corrupt election in November 2020. And to restore the real winner of all legal votes so that he can start clearing up the appalling mess that has resulted as well as making the rest of the world a safer place again, something I care about, living in Israel, instead of the USA having become a laughing stock internationally. Americans, the ball is in your court and no one else's. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>